Uh, Miss Norma, thank you again for sitting down with me today. My pleasure. Um, as I mentioned to you, this is for uh, Urban Artistry, our organization back in D.C. that we're doing a project called the Preservatory, and it's geared towards making sure that we document amazing dancers who have contributed so much to our community and culture. Thank you. Like yourself. Um, so, like I said, you've answered many of these questions many times, but we'll just start at the beginning. No so problem. So, when, uh, what's your name, how old are you, and where are you from? Norma Miller. And I'm 96, which means I'm the oldest woman in show business. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And where are you from? New York City. And where was your family from? Bridgetown, Barbados. Awesome. My mother was an immigrant. My mother came over to this country when she was 15 years old. That's beautiful. And your father also? My father, I don't know when he came because I didn't know <coughs> my father. <coughs> he died the month before I was born, so I had no way of knowing. Hmm. And my mother was too busy to find out who he was, even. Because <coughs> at the time she had two children, yeah. Yeah. And so you have a sister? I had a sister. Had a sister? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a mother. And what was your sister's <coughs> They're name? They're gone. They're both gone, yeah. What was your sister's name? Do Dorothy. Don't Dorothy Miller, yeah. My sister, you could see her, the first dancer on Day at the Races. The first in the first couple? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you and Dot were coming up, how did you start in dancing? I was like, dancing just was something I could do. But I, my mother used to have house rent parties, and I used to dance for her, for her guests. Mm. Yeah. What were some of the dances that you would do? I guess I was doing jazz dancing. I was just dancing to what music I heard. They didn't call it anything. You just moved it. <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't remember that. It, none of it had a name because it's what they played. Uh, you always had a piano player in the house. Oh. He tickled in the piano, and I danced to whatever. He, I was the entertainer. My mother wanted me to be a star. Awesome. <laughs> so in your in her quest to make you a star, how did she, you know, encourage you or help well, you? Well, in those days, path? there was amateur night in every theater. See, Harlem had a lot of theaters. We had the Odeon, the, Op the Lafayette, the Roosevelt, the Lowy State. So every theater had an amateur night mm -hmm. where people could come and entertain. And my mother used to take me to all of them. I played every theater in Harlem dancing on amateur night, you know. And was this every week or once a month? It's once a week. Once a week. In some theater, yeah. Nice. And so how many times would you say you performed at the Apollo? Well, this is before the Apollo. Before the Apollo. This wasn't, your, there was no Apollo yet. Oh. This was the, the, the local theaters. Okay. The Odeon on 45th Street, the Roosevelt on 45th Street and 7th Avenue. The Lafayette was the main theater in those days. Okay. So these were the theaters that we played for amateur night, yeah. And how many times did you win? You win some, you lose some, yeah. you know. I'm just curious if you remember. I, I don't think I'll win. I, I might have won one or two, I don't know, you know. And it was you and your sister or just no, you? No, just me. Just you. Yeah. So you just had the passion for dancing and oh, performing yeah. very early. So would you, do you remember your first dance lesson? I didn't have a dance lesson. I got that later on when I, my mother uh, enrolled me at a dancing school called Amanda Camp at 138th Street between 8th and 7th. And I was enrolled in that school. And Amanda Camp had a little dancing school for young people. And I was a member of that group. And later on, I met uh, the young chorus girls who came to New York with Leonard Reed. Mm. And I used to follow them around to all their rehearsals. So one time he was missing two girls. He came out and wanted to know if I could dance. And I said, yeah. So he said, get in there and learn that routine. I had already known because I've been watching them. You've been following them around, yeah. How old were you then? So they were going on the road. and. I didn't tell him I was 14. So I went on the road with them. And the police came and got me and took me off stage. When they found out you were 14. <laughs> Lenny Reed almost had a heart attack. So this was the beginning, you say, of your, your yeah. very short-lived chorus girl yeah. life. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so when you started dancing, what was it, or at the time, did you guys consider it an underground culture? or? Oh, well, I started with Leonard Reed. Industry? And so it was on stage. But then all of a sudden, Lindy Hop came in. Hmm. 
And I won a contest at the Apollo Theater. Worked a week at the Apollo Theater and then I joined Whitey. Now in between then, you tell the story of when, it's getting a mosquito away from you. <laughs> you tell the story of when uh, Twistmouth George found you. You said oh, you were outside playing? This was Easter Sunday. Because mm -hmm. uh, we lived right in the back of the Savoy. So you can sit in the window and sit on the fire escape and see what was going on in the ballroom. So my sister and I used to sit there and watch everything going on in the ballroom. And it was an Easter Sunday. Uh, uh, the, it was uh, the see there was no, no air conditioning, mm -hmm. so the windows mm -hmm. was wide open. So when the band hit up at four o'clock, it came right into our house. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, Easter Sunday, I want to see the Easter parade. Well, come to the Savoy, it's an Easter parade yeah. like you've never seen. So I'm standing out there, and I'm dancing to the music, and a man called me. He said, hey, kid. And I looked, and it was this very famous dancer, Twisra George, all, dressed all in white, hat, suit, vest, shoes. I mean, but the mouth was all the way over here. Mm. That's why they call him Twist Mouth George. Mm. So he said, do you want to come and dance with me? Heck yeah. Now, you were how old at this time? Twelve. And so having a grown man come ask you to dance, that was just, Straight you up. just go. Because you just wanted to see the Savoy. And I got out there and danced. <laughs> Greatest moment in my life. And what did your mom think about that? I said, I'm going home and tell my mother how I happy. I said, no, I better not say nothing. <laughs> did she ever find out about that? When I wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say when she read that? Well, she knew. I, I danced Mom's all my life. Knew, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what was it like for you being in that environment as a very young teenager? I know, of course, you were excited to see the inside of the Savoy, but... Well, it wasn't until after I won the contest that I met Whitey. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I'd rather you dance with us than against us. Would you like to come to the Savoy and dance? So mm -hmm. He invited me up there, and that was the beginning. Uh, at that time, he was looking for young dancers also. He found Frankie. He found young dancers who can come to the ballroom. We were given special permission mm. to come into the ballroom because you had to be 18. But we would, I was 14. Yeah. So they allowed me to come to the ballroom. Were there 14. any other dancers on the team that were as young as you? No. No. I was the youngest at that time, yeah. Awesome. Now I'm the oldest. And when you guys started, Whitey's and you guys started rehearsing and practicing and doing all these Every things. Every day. That's what I was going to ask you. So what That was, was the, the Boys and Girl Club for us. Like what time did you get up? What time did you go well, to the Savoy? After school. After school. Every day. That was where yeah, I passed the Savoy to get home. So instead of going home, I went up to the Savoy. That was every afternoon because the bands were rehearsing. Right. So you're listening to the band and you rehearse it. That became my, uh, my after hour things that I did and it was Dancing the Lindy. Nice. Yeah. And so when did you first learn Lindy? Or when did you guys first start calling it Lindy? Well, they started calling it 1927 when Lindbergh made the flag. Mm -hmm. The shorty named it the, uh, the, Lin the Lindy Hop. But at the time, we were kids dancing at a place called the Rennie, the mm -hmm. Renaissance. We'd go there from 3 o'clock, every Sunday from 3 o'clock to nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. That was where we danced every Sunday and we were doing what they what they were doing at the Savoy. And Very that's how nice. Yeah. Even before they were calling it the Lindy you guys were doing? Well they started calling it the Lindy from a uh, Shorty George. Mm -hmm. He named it. Yeah. But it was already being done. Yeah. Yeah. So we all began doing this thing called the Lindy. And so you were mentioning to me earlier, um, after the amazing jazz routine that you put on us today. <laughs> it's a good thing of sitting down. Still can't feel my legs. Um, but you were talking about the chorus girls being the ones that really kind of inspired the Well, jazz the chorus steps. girls was the one that came up with jazz dancing. Mm -hmm. Because they worked with different bands every week. So they had to come up with routines that fit the but fit the band. Okay. So they're the ones that actually created this thing called jazz dancing. They made up stuff week after week. And that was what I showed you today. So if you had to say in a timeline sort of order, yeah. which came first, the jazz dancing or the Lindy Hop? 
where the jazz dancing came first. Mm -hmm. Jazz dance was done on a regular basis, mm -hmm. every week. Even people who weren't on stage were doing jazz dances. And was it a now social? The, a jazz dancer didn't Lindy. A Lindy dancer didn't jazz dance. Really? One was in a ballroom, one was on the stage. They were two different things completely. Interesting. So none of the jazz dances were ever really done socially? Well, Norma Miller dancers never did the Lindy. Yeah. And were there other jazz dancers before the Norma Miller dancers? The chorus girls. Okay. The Norma, I adopted jazz dancing. I adopted after, uh, but you see, when the war came up, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. It changed the music and whatnot. And that was now I'm forming a group called Young Dancers, but they were jazz dancers. Mm -hmm. They they weren't interested in doing the Lindy. So with that timeline that yeah. you were talking about, you guys are in in Whitey's and you're starting to perform and you're competing and performing with the bands and things like this? Well, we became part of the package out of the support boardroom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you'd have Ella Fitzgerald, Chick Webb's band, and the best Lindy Hop team would be at the Apollo. Okay. Then we'd do the Apollo, the Howard in Washington, the Royal in Baltimore, the Lincoln in Philadelphia. That was a regular route of a show business. So this is how the Lindy Hoppers became part of a package. Mm -hmm. But now, when the draft, when the war came up, the draft took all the best male dancers. Yeah. So that was how we had to change. Could you tell me a little bit about your time at the, the ballroom in Baltimore? Which one was that again, you said? About? The ballroom that you guys performed in, in the, at Baltimore. As a kid or as at the Savoy? At Whitey's, as a kid. The, you said you were on the tour, the package that came out of, out of the Savoy? Well, see, they packaged us out of the Savoy. Because mm -hmm. we were part of everything that went... Chick Webb is a house band. Yes. Ella Fitzgerald is the singer. Yes. And they're going to put a show at the Apollo, and mm -hmm. they put the dancers with that. That what became the Lindy Hoppers. Not Whitey's. It didn't become Whitey's. Okay. Until Ethel Waters took us on the road. Okay. And Ethel Waters named us Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. So just as a kid, when you were touring, what was that experience like? Great. <laughs> Four shows a day in show business. You and what, we was it, what was it like in Baltimore? How was it received when you guys were That was the room? Royal in Baltimore. That's mm -hmm. the theater there. Yeah. Did uh, they, did, were people, like, did they enjoy the Lindy down there? Or? The Lindy was just an opening act. Yeah. The star was the main thing at the, when you played the theater. They were looking at Ella, not us. Ella was the star. So, no, you couldn't tell if anyone was gravitating towards the dance? Or? <laughs> that nobody, it wasn't a, it wasn't a place, a thing that you took the classes in. Mm. It was just an act that did the Lindy Hop. Like a tap dancer just did his tap dance. Right. His spot and he got off the, the star. Who's that? Was that Ella? Yeah. Nice. The star was Ethel Waters. The star was Chick Webb. You know? Yeah. We were just a part, one fifth of a part of a package. And so you said you had the Savoy package. And when did you guys start working with Ethel? 1937, when she took a show on the road. Mm -hmm. And she came She came to the ballroom to um, learn how to do the Lindy. Mm -hmm. And Frankie was the one taught her how to do the Lindy. Awesome. Yeah. So her desire to do the dance is what she had. She, lindied in her, she did the Lindy in her show. Because the Lindy was the popular dance of the day. Yeah. The most popular. There wasn't a show that went out that didn't have Lindy Hoppers. You wouldn't dare. I mean, that was the hardest act there was. So any show that left anywhere would always have Lindy Hopper somewhere in the bill. And Ethel Waters was the top act at the time. So we were her Lindy Hoppers. Bill Robinson had Lindy Hoppers. The Cotton Club had Lindy Hoppers. Ethel Waters, everybody had Lindy Hoppers on their bill because that was the dance of the day. Mm. Yeah. So you said you, in the meeting, you were saying that you also worked with uh, Cap Calloway and Count Basie as well. Cotton Club. And so Count they, Basie, that was Las a Vegas. performance yeah. as well. Awesome. Yeah. So when you decided, or when you, well, actually, you were fully already invested in, in dance and this was your career, this was your life, uh, we were starting to talk about that a little bit beforehand. Um, what was it like for you as a woman being a dancer and being a performer and traveling and doing this thing? Holy hell. The woman catches hell in show business. Mm. It's a hard life, but it's the life I that I led. It's the kind of it's not easy. You're working four shows a day. You mean how do you get on with relationships and stuff like that? Is that what you're leading to? No, no, no. Just 
period, all of it. <laughs> if you have any of that too. Was that a struggle for you to... And a struggle too? Uh, listen, when you're young, your entirely life is entirely different. Mm. You know, we travel it at the waters. I think, how did that end? Uh, oh, we got as far as California, making a movie. Mm -hmm. At the end of the movie that we were making, I wind up in the hospital for six months. Uh, exhaustion. Mm. Yeah. I've been dancing every day of my life. Yeah. And so I was six months in the hospital. I didn't come out till I was 18. Mm -hmm. I come out the hospital at 18. 94 pounds. So you could really fly then. <laughs> now I started back, my health started being built up again. Mm -hmm. But you notice, the most important thing about a dancer, your health breaks down if you're over, if you overwork the body. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned. And that's what we did. And I'm 17. Yeah. I was completely exhausted. So what did you change thereafter? And what, what is that that you would like to impart to dancers nowadays doing this dance? As far as caring you, for the you body. Have, the body has to rest. To be a dancer, you need a lot of rest. Some people don't get a lot of rest. Mm -hmm. Like, we were dancers who didn't smoke or drink. We did, you couldn't do any of those things. And was that a policy of the tour, or that was just you guys' choice? That's a co policy of common sense. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> common sense. Yes, ma'am. But you work hard all your, every day. It just makes sense. It's stop rest the body. Mm -hmm. The body is, this is all you have. When you, did, when you damage it, yeah. it takes a long time to heal it, yeah. So looking into not just like the relationship aspects as a woman, but from a societal standpoint, I know there were a lot of black dancers, African American dancers doing this dance. When you started to see white dancers performing this dance, how did that make you feel? Well, I don't care. This was 40 years. And, you got to, it's a, a lapse of 40 years between when I was doing it and when the, as you say, white dancers began doing it. <clears throat> that was 40 years later. Oh, no, I mean like when, when Dean Collins started performing it. And Dean Collins never performed with us. Not with you guys, but when you started seeing him do the dance. No, uh -uh, uh -uh. there's a time limit. Mm. From what I understand, Dean Collins was in that movie, Hells of Poppin'. But our, our relationship with Hollywood ended with Hells of Poppin'. Okay. Uh, the next group that they brought in was Frank and them. Whitey got into a tiff with the uh, producers in Hollywood. Hmm. So you know what? They don't need you. They cut us out and you never saw another black dancer make a movie. Then the white dancers came in. It was simple as that. The tactics was wrong. He tried to buck the big gangsters. Yeah. He was yeah, a small gangster. Meeting the big gangsters. You can't find no bigger gangsters than, than in Hollywood. <laughs> they invented the word. <laughs> they so chewed back, Whitey up. Oh, goodness. So back at the Savoy, when everybody talks about how that was an integrated ballroom. Oh, it was an integrated ballroom from the day one. Yeah. Did you guys all dance the Lindy together? Oh, yeah. And they were good. They had to be to be at the Savoy, right? Oh, yeah, they were good, yeah. They had a kid there named Harry Rosenberg that was as good as Frankie. He, everything Frankie did, he would copy it and do it better. <laughs> Poor Frankie was so frustrated. That's how Frankie went and did an air step. <laughs> ah, interesting. Okay. Listen, you could, these white kids, well, they came, they came up the same like we, but they had a place to go to when they left the Savoy. We didn't. Mm. That's the difference. So what, what was that like, knowing that they were coming and learning this dance? Oh, we don't care. Listen, at that stage, who cares? We, we were better than they were. Yeah. So you were just happy to share it? Of course. So with thinking about the dance and all that you guys have contributed to it and seeing, and I know there's a lot of gaps in the connections. Sure. But of course you can see a lot of the, the similarities in shape and some of the expressions of urban dance today. How do you feel about the way some of jazz dance is used today. There's, listen, they don't know, you saw today, that's jazz dancing. What yeah. they do, that's not jazz dancing. No, no, I know it's not jazz dancing. Okay. How do you feel about the use of that movement as inspiration for the things they do today? It don't matter. If you like it, wonderful. Yeah. You know, if you can take part in it, wonderful. I don't care. 
Do you like it? Yeah, of course. You like it all. I like it, the fact that somebody's interested in doing it. Do you realize that dance was thrown to the curb? Yeah. We had to recitate it. <laughs> Nobody was talking about no jazz dancing. Listen, they wasn't, we couldn't even get a job at one time. Frankie had to spend 37 years in the post office because he couldn't get a job. Because nobody, nobody cared. So, now you got a group of people care. Yeah. And they want to teach it. How I feel, I think it's wonderful because now at least it won't die the death that it was doomed to die. Yeah. Of course. So where would, you, where would you like to see the dance in the community go? I don't care what they do. At this age, if you can walk, it's all right with me. Listen, my days of dancing is over. I have no interest in dancing. It's, my life is very, I got more life in back of me than I got in front of me. Now, I'm going to try to spend it as much as I can, as happy as I can. And if I can participate and give you something I can leave you with, I'm very happy to do so. But if you don't take it, I don't care. Understood. So as far as from coming from an urban dance perspective, okay, yeah. how would you like to see jazz dance live on in urban dance? I hope it can live on. But do y'all know anything about it? Yes, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I know it. But you don't know nothing about it. Yep, I do. You do? Yeah. Okay, then you then I can depend on you continuing it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. But the interest, your interest and mine is far different. You have interest in doing something. I don't care whether you do it or not. All I want to know is, please don't forget us. You know, it's, it's easy to forget us. So in, in not forgetting, who are the dancers that you want to make sure we don't forget? Don't forget Frankie. Because he gave it to you. He gave you his everything. And who else? Nobody else. Nobody did what Frankie did. I mean, if y'all waited for me to teach you, you wouldn't have never learned nothing. <laughs> he was marvelous. You know, I'm not good. I'm only good at choreographing. Okay. I can take the do dancer and make you do and make you do better than what you're doing. Yes. That's all I can do. But for teaching, oh, I didn't have that. Uh, they said to me, Norma, we would rather you not teach. <laughs> and when it comes to teaching this dance. How do you how do you feel about the way that it's being taught? I think it's fine. I, I, listen, they, then the dancers are very good today. Yeah. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah, very yeah. Very good dancers today. But it took twenty years to get it back. Mm -hmm. Twenty years right here in this spot. Now I know this. I know we're in Sweden right now in uh, in in Europe. And it's really widely celebrated and practiced here. Well, how would you like to see it improve? The Savoy the have moved over. To harangue. <laughs> Even I said to Leonard, yeah. who the hell is going to come over to Sweden to learn some Lindy Hop? Are you crazy? But that's what they did. They, he found a place, this place, and Frankie came and taught all of you how to do the Lindy. I think it's wonderful. I'll continue his work as long as I can. But I don't care if you do the Lindy. I don't care what you do. If you want to dance, fine. If you don't want to dance, fine with me. Yeah. But it's there. For, at least it's here for you to learn about it. To find it. It's now, how here. would you like to see things improve in the states as far as that? I, uh, the yeah, information I, being available to find. It's up to you. There's all kind of dancing in the states. Yeah, yeah. You got the routine. Now get out there and do it and say, "Hey, folk," and then start teaching. Yes, ma'am. You Is there anything else that you, maybe to me directly or to keep dance, swinging dancers in the That's it. Keep swinging. Thank you, Miss Norma. Thank you.